In the years and decades to come, neuroscience is going to challenge and change so many of our approaches to leadership. Let me give you an example. I recently had lunch with a senior executive. He told me an illustrative, but also somewhat sad story about the allocation of team development funds. They had called upon a so-called team coach to help them improve the collaboration in the team, and they ended up spending two days with these two prevailing questions for the team to ponder and discuss. One, is there a pecking order in the team? And two, what team member is a hindrance to your work? Now, these two questions and the discussions and quarrels that followed left the team absolutely drained and several team members on the brink of tears and even resignation. The good intention of the senior executive had been to take away any idea that such a pecking order existed. He was, after all, an egalitarian, respectful, responsible leader. He didn't want that in his team, but he followed what I call old school psychology. If you address it, it magically goes away. But this is not brain logic. However, I see it manifested in so many organizations and parts of society still, it is just not brain logic. A core rule of the brain goes like this. Neurons that fire together wire together. It means that when two neurons in the brain start firing at the same time, they team up. A connection is created and each and every time these neurons fire together in the future, the connection will get stronger and more hardwired in the brain. Some of these team members had never even thought about pecking order before in relation to the team, but now that the theme had been introduced, team, pecking order, they certainly would think about it in the future. And with that, the threat responses of their brains would fire too. The senior executive did at least three things that were contrary to brain logic. Firstly, he pursued an away from goal. He wanted to get rid of any idea that such a pecking order existed. But the rules of the brain, they actually tell us that what we pay attention to, we get more of. Secondly, he also introduced a theme that was highly intertwined with status in a rather clumsy way. Neuroscientists, they know that our brains are very sensitive to status. We constantly assess whether we have higher status or lower status than others, and also whether we are about to lose status. And all this was at stake for the team here. Thirdly, as I mentioned, he followed old school psychology. If you address it, it magically goes away. But that is not ju that's just not how things work. And actually, you give life to that reality instead. So brain-based leadership, neuroleadership, is very much about knowing and applying the rules of the brain. Often, it takes a tiny tweak to boost your results enormously.